Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today is a day in Ireland where it's pouring down of rain outside. It's freezing cold in the garage here. I'm also full of cold, well, man flu actually. So I'm gonna grab myself a lovely hot cup of tea and head inside, which incidentally is where the Triumph Street Triple 765 RS is residing at the moment. I even love saying those words. So here's the before shot. Now, if you stay tuned after the sting, you'll see the after shot because of a bucket full of modifications to add to the bike. Okay, so here we are in the hallway of my house. Now, uh, for those of you, again, who followed me for a while, you may remember this is exactly where the Royal Enfield used to live before I took that out to the garage. Uh, but uh, now it's the turn of the <laughs> Street Triple uh, to live here, uh, but only just whilst I'm putting the mods on. And uh, again, um, for those of you who are just joining, this uh, sort of escapade, if you like, with the 765 RS. Um, I can't put it in the garage because it's not insured. Therefore, it's only insured whilst it's in the house under my house insurance because it's not registered yet. And uh, again, you'll probably watch this video and think, whenever is he going to take it out for a ride? The short answer to that is um, probably the second day in uh, 2024. Uh, because it's not been registered until then. Anyway, so uh, my first question is, do you prefer, well, the, I should tell you first of all, the mirrors eventually turned up. They did get separated um, from the bike in transit, winging its way to me, uh, well, to the motorcycle shop, um, but they turned up a week later. Here they are. I think they look fantastic. They are, of course, the bar end mirrors, which come as standard with the bike. Uh, but do you prefer the innie look, which is this one here, or the outy, bit like a belly button, an innie or an outy. But uh, personally, I prefer the outy, uh, but I know many of you ride these bikes and other bikes with bar end mirrors um, and have them turned innie like this, uh, for want of a, a better phrase. Um, but now, I, I realize that it makes sense if you're sort of commuting in tight traffic to have them turned in. Um, but I do like those extra couple of inches, um, of course, who doesn't? <laughs> but uh, I think it really, uh, well, I think it's the correct way. Let me know in the comments below which way you prefer. Okay, on with the actual mods. Uh, now, many of you, again, who followed me um, will have seen that I uh, swear by these Michelin, um, what, what are they called again, fit to go I have tried searching for a link for you, but Amazon don't seem to sell them anymore. It's just, uh, it, it gives you real peace of mind if you were to ever get a puncture, um, a slow one be it. I know you've got a tyre wall sort of uh, protecting you against uh, total deflation, but it, it's a real good peace of mind um, to know if you've got a slow puncture. The BMW, the G GS obviously has its own inbuilt um, tyre pressure sensors, as do many bikes these days. And I think, well, in fact, I know you can get one for the Street Triple RS, but it's about 300 quid. Uh, this system only costs you uh, 100 quid. When I'm saying quid, I mean euro. Um, so, uh, because I'm in Ireland. Um, so, uh, yeah, so check them out. Just do a Google search and try and find them. There are other types available. You don't uh, just have to buy this system, but uh, this is the system I know and swear by and uh, never let me down. And it's actually warned me of two punctures in the last three years of uh, riding motorbikes. Okay, um, the other thing um, I want to talk about is that you can't go anywhere, of course, without branding your bike. And what better way to do that uh, than a key ring? So, of course, I had to uh, order the Triumph or a Triumph key ring. I went for a fabric one this time rather than a metal key ring because I've made that mistake in the past with like a leather fob with a metal sort of badge on. And of course, it never stays the way you want it. It'll turn upside down, especially on a naked bike like this, and it'll scratch the bejesus out of your handlebars. So I went for a fabric one, as you can see here. Um, yeah, the battery charger lead. This is a universal one I bought for my Optimate 4 system, only because my local bike shop didn't have any of the um, extra leads in stock at the time I went there and asked them for them. So uh, I went on Amazon, bought this for uh, €10, Euro, 
um, which was supposed to fit uh, the Optimate chargers and other chargers. Doesn't quite fit, but listen, it'll do for the moment. It, it allows the, the two to sort of marry each other and charge, but the slightest snag pulls it out. It doesn't basically click in. So to take the seat off, you obviously use the key, with the key ring on, <laughs> and remove the uh, rear seat cowl, as I did here. Um, and when the uh, cowl was off, I then uh, wanted to re remove the main seat. Uh, now, to do that, um, I wasn't quite sure um, uh, how to get that. I just couldn't work it out for the life of me. So I went to the instruction book, uh, which came with the bike, of course, and it told me that there's a um, toolkit underneath the seat. So, um, obviously, I couldn't find the toolkit anywhere there, so I thought maybe that's gone missing with me uh, sidebar mirrors. Um, I'll get back onto the shop. So, I thought, right, I'll be really smart here. I'll get one of my Allen keys, which I found the correct size in no time at all. God, I really am getting better with the mechanics and <laughs> fixing things up. And remove the main seat, so that's what I did here. Now, I'll come on to the Allen key in a moment, okay? Um, and uh, so what I did was to, uh, again, like you can see here, I put little cable ties. It was a real easy job, just undo, uh, undoing one terminal at a time, and I never fully disconnected um, the power to the uh, bike or to the system. I always kept my hands pressed down on the terminals as I just removed one screw at a time um, to fit the lead. I then ran it around the battery and uh, cable tied it, made it look nice and neat. And I brought it down um, again, as you can see here, just so it pops out underneath that um, rear seat cowl. Um, it has the rubber cap on the end of it, which is good, so it'll stop any sort of uh, dirt or muck from the road. Or even um, when you're washing your bike, it'll stop any moisture getting in there. Uh, and obviously leave it um, hanging down uh, just as some sort of protection from the rain as well if it's outside. Um, you can also tuck it up behind that bit of plastic on the rear seat cow. So, uh, yeah, like I was talking about with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, the Allen key, thinking I was really smart because my toolkit had gone missing. I actually stuck the Allen key with a bit of double-sided tape underneath the rear cowl, uh, just in case of uh, those emergencies when I needed to get the main seat off. I thought, yeah, Boy Scout stuff here, I'll be prepared. I just thought I'll have one more look around, and lo and behold, um, guess what? When I took the seat cowl off about a week later, um, there are all the Allen keys, the, the one, well, in fact, the entire toolkit. It even comes with that beautiful little uh, flathead screwdriver so you can adjust your suspension settings. Because I'd often wondered, whilst looking at the bike in my hallway, how on earth am I going to get a, a fine screwdriver down onto the top of the forks there to turn them? It's a bit awkward. And there is the uh, the little toolkit in all of its glory. Uh, everything lovely and neat, sitting tight in its place. And uh, obviously, with any toolkit, you hope you never have to use them. But I know it's there in case I do. All right. Um, next up, I uh, really had to uh, struggle with this. Um, the, the, the quad lock phone charger. I had bits and pieces left over from uh, like all, all of my bikes I've put the quad lock onto. I really wanted the fork stem mount on this bike just to keep everything in the middle of the bike looking nice and neat. I'm sure I have a bit of OCD. I didn't want it sort of offset, uh, so I'll, I, I thought I'll go for the fork stem mount and I'll just buy the um, the kit. I think when you buy the spacer kit, it comes with two different sizes. So, and it was only £15 or something like that. So, delighted with life. That arrived and uh, tried both of them. So, the skinny one was too skinny and didn't widen out far enough to get any grip. And the fat one was too fat, wouldn't even fit down the hole. Um, so, I tried everything. Now, I have seen it on YouTube, on those of you who've got this bike, um, using the quad lock stem mount. I'm sure there's a much easier way, but after about an hour, I gave up and I used even more spare parts and uh, I mounted it on the handlebar. And actually, I think it re it looks really good. I'm, I, I'm not too upset about it not being mounted in the middle. Um, and as you can see, I've got the USB charging mount. Don't forget to buy that vibrating cradle. Um, I, I, I can't stress that good enough, having already um, wiped out an iPhone with vibration. And obviously, it's the wireless charging mount. Uh, which will lead me lovely onto, of course, you need power up front. Now, why on earth 
do some bike manufacturers do this and put the USB again under the rear seat cowl? I mean, I'm never ever going to take the rear seat cowl off to leave me phone in there to charge or my like action cameras or anything which I want to charge. I'm never going to take the rear seat off uh, to charge them. So I ordered, uh, um, well, I thought the one meter extent, a USB extension cable would be too short. So I ordered a two meter one, knowing that I could wrap up any excess underneath that seat cowl. Um, so that arrived. Then I thought I was being super smart again because the wireless charge and lead from the quad lock head actually fit down inside the stem and then come out the bottom. So I thought, this is great. I'll start at the front and I'll work my way routing the cable to the back. The actual USB lead from the quad lock fit down. Yeah, the extension lead um, didn't fit back up. So back to square one, which was fairly easy. Now I have a history of taking motorbike panels off and snapping those little black um, poppet um, things. You know what I'm talking about. These things here you see in the picture. So every time I take a panel off, I snap at least one of them. They're a nightmare to get back on as well. Uh, so I thought, I wonder if there's a way where I can just reroute the cable, the extension cable, all the way to the back of the bike, bring it out somewhere in that um, missing, or well, underneath the missing uh, seat cowl. So uh, guess what? I could. And what I did, as you can see where my hand is here, I put a couple of bits of uh, double-sided, that stuff you stick registration plates on. Like it's a foam, double-sided sticky foam thing. I, I put a couple of bits underneath this panel here, which holds the cable in place. And then the rest of the cable just uh, sits behind the framework. Now... Again, I haven't ridden the bike yet, so it may well turn out that when I uh, return after my first ride, there'll be a big black cable hanging out the side of the bike. I doubt it because it feels nice and secure, but time will tell. And then, uh, yeah, so rather chuffed with that, and that literally took minutes to do. And I, like I say, I didn't have to remove a single panel, uh, and, uh, and that all works. As you can see, when I plug the plug into the USB socket at the back of the bike, um, the phone, the wireless phone charger lit up on the front of the bike. Well chuffed, so I was. Okay, next, moving on, um, I bought a radiator guard, which I think you need on a bike like this. The radiator is really wide, and I think one stone coming up into that, oh, God, that it would break your heart. So I bought one of these from AliExpress, and it was €26.50. Euro. Uh, comes with a, a bit of foam because I had read in one of the reviews actually on AliExpress that it vibrated. That was before they supplied the foam. So as you can see here, I put the foam down the side, uh, well, both sides of the radiator. Uh, and the, um, the, the guard is really easy to fit. You just remove these two screws, uh, as I did even with a pair of pliers. The guard fits um, over there. Uh, just pop the two screws with the washers back in and it, it fits really lovely so um, I've got no worries about that I, I actually think it looks great too um, the other thing I bought from AliExpress for 32 euro for the set is the uh, crash bobbin spindle thingies uh, they were really easy to fit just be careful if you're not used to fitting stuff like this which way around you put them it, 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 I mean it's fairly obvious takes a little bit of common sense that's all you know by the time you've had the crash if they're going to save anything of your bike your bike's gone already going to be written off to be honest if you were uh, hoping just to save this part of your bike on the front and rear uh, down at the uh, front forks on the rear forks then you're going to have awful damage to the rest of the bike but listen it's uh I don't know. All of this is peace of mind as well. Um, last but not least, because I'm rabbiting on enough now, um, I mean, you can't finish a, a modification day on your bike without adding your own sticker. So there it goes. Really good TV. Uh, and to me, that just completes the bike. Oh, did I mention? Uh, no, I've forgotten to mention something. Um, the tank guard, of course. Uh, that's one of the most important things I buy for any bike. In fact, it's probably the first thing I buy for any bike. Uh, I got this tank guard off eBay for a tenner. It was a bit too long and covered too much of the tank. So as you, as you can see, what I did here is I cut the bottom 
off the tank guard, and I stuck it on the rear cowl. Not sure about that. Might go um, over the next few weeks, but uh, the tank guard I really love, and uh, it's a beautiful fix to the tank, and it feels great as well. It's, it's that sort of gel material, uh, and I know it'll, well, of course, it'll protect that beautiful paintwork. Okay, let's go back to me in the garage. And there you have it, folks. The only other thing I want to add is a screen protector on the display at the front. It just didn't arrive in time for me making this video. The tail tidy as well. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold my horses, which is unlike me. I'm going to wait until the registration plate is on the back because the shape of it and the way it sort of frames the rear wheel, it's growing on me, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. If I don't like it, then I'll look into a tail tidy over the next few months. The other thing, the tyres as well. The tyres which the bike comes with, are really more suited to hotter climates, I feel, and even track days. So I'm going to scrub them in, but I suspect when I take the bike in for its first service, I'll change the tyres out. I don't know what to yet. I'll do a little bit of research. Any suggestions, of course, let me know below. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, when oh, heated grips. Of course, I bought the bike and I ordered the heated grips as an extra, which was €300, Euro, and to me, that's money well spent again here in Ireland and uh, once I pair them with my heated gloves well then hopefully I can ride a naked bike all year round in Ireland who would have thought huh now the last thing to say is when somebody says yeah but did you actually modify your bike did you do anything to the bike I can now say well I've been there I've done that I even bought the t-shirt thanks a million for tuning in folks Dave Perry really good TV have a great week everybody ride safe over and out